morning, folks. Today I'm uh, exploring some some new water down in Virginia, and uh, this is the kind of exploration that these inflatables are perfect for. You pair them with the Torquedo Ultralight and uh, three three horsepower electric outboard and a paddle. These are places where you gotta pull it up and use this thing, which I'm happy to do, because uh, it means that I'm getting shallower in skinnier water than, than anybody else can. You know, I'm, I'm able to easily get through, you know, water that's uh, certainly less than, than three inches. Uh, I can, at speed with the motor, mash through water that's just an inch deep, so. We're gonna keep moving until we find some slower, deeper pools in this, this small river and uh, see if we can catch some largemouth. So I've pulled into an area that's really widened out, which is exactly what, what they're gonna wanna be in, just because it's, you know, it's less current to fight. They have a slower metabolism, you know, they, they don't want to work if they don't need to, and uh, this is this is certainly affording them the chance, you know, when the colder months hit, to uh, to be in less current, work less, have that slower metabolism, and yes, occasionally eat. All right, we started the day at 47.1, and uh, it's slowly come up to 50.7. And now I got my first bite. It's uh, yeah, it's a uh, quarter after eleven, and it can be slow in the morning like that. In in the colder months for sure, but we got the first one to bite. I got the uh, got this one on the. If I can get it out of there and show you, there he is on the. Um, Oh, finesse jig. This is the finesse jig, shrooms micro finesse jig um, that I was using. And it's actually a drop shot worm that uh, it's a Laztec, it's a Z Man product. And I like it because it has the ribs. And what you, what the ribs are good for, obviously, it gives it good action. But you also want to get the get the scent in there. What the scent does for you in the colder months, you know, when you, you may not feel the bite right away, is they just hold it. Those ribs hold the scent, and that makes the fish hold on to the bait a little bit longer. in these spots that are, for lack of a better term, just feeding stations for these fish. You know, the, um, the current is coming through here, but there's this little back cut right over here that, you know, calms that water just a little bit and fish like this move up just tucked in from the current a little bit. Let's take a look at this feeding station. Uh, by feeding station what I'm really looking for is a, a current seam and it's not a real obvious one. Let's take a look right here. So let's let's start by looking at that leaf right there. We're gonna we're gonna back up and you can see that that is traveling along there. So we have current here, but then you move up into that little pocket and you can see leaves just sitting still. This is hard to, to really show it because I'm in current and I'm moving, but, but that leaf right there is sitting still. And you actually have two different feeding stations. One is right there current's coming around here and there's a comp pocket there and some wood and and there's deeper water here we're in eh, it doesn't show it there but 
we're two and a half here, but we're gonna move in that direction. And it's the same thing ha that happens right here. It drops off closer to that point. And that access to deeper water, basically a, a, a lane for them to run up you know, and, and get to this point where calm water on one side, moving water on this side, um, really makes, you know, makes for a good, good ambush point. They can hang out in, you know, the calm water there, but there's, there's water, there's current moving along here and they sit right in that corner looking out. And, uh, that's, that's where that one just hit, just kind of on that, that point, but in that really still water right there so this could be another feeding station we have current moving down in this direction and there's calm water on the back side um, but it also looks shallow and I think what I would rather see is a little bit more depth I will put a you know the finesse jig in there and see if anyone's home um, but yeah it might be deep enough I'm seeing seven feet right here at the back of the boat but it isn't the the current gradient or the current seam alone that makes it a feeding station it's it's really having a vast you know deep area immediately below it you know they're gonna move from the deeper water that's here behind me up into those feeding stations when they feel like eating you know, they got to do a little bit of work getting up into the current to to get to those spots. Uh, and, and, you know, there's the reason they're up there is to eat. You know, they're just high percentage places and they're, they're not always a bunch of fish in there. It's nice when there are, um, but they just kind of take turns. It's, it's the kitchen. It's the, the kitchen counter. There's going to be something to eat there. So I'm going to bring the finesse jig in for a little bit and we're going to switch from targeting those feeding stations to getting out into what I believe is the meat of this winter hole. Um, big big wide area where this, this river has broadened out and has some depth to it. Um, you know that that's that is the recipe for you know for bass in in a river setting anywhere, whether it's river smallmouth or these these largemouth in this low gradient river setting, uh, you find areas where it's it's you know it gets wider and deeper and slower current. And I marked some really nice groupings of fish out in the middle of this this really wide you know calm area and it's harder to really pinpoint them when they're kind of moving around in schools out here uh, and that that's where the jerk bait comes into play so what i'm going to be doing i have looks like my depth is approaching nine maybe close to ten feet i know there's some deeper areas out here um, i'm moving with the torpedo just just giving myself a little bit of speed and it's in essence I'm going to let a little more line out. In essence, uh, what I'm doing is very, very slow trolling with the suspending jerk bait, where I let the, my arm swing back and I get to a certain point and I give it a rip. And that rip is loud. The rattles in the bait go and every, every fish that's in that area looks up and says, what is that? And I'm hoping with the, you know, the marks that I found there where there's groupings of like two dozen bass in one area. Uh, I'm really hoping that they they get competitive with it, where they say, oh, there's there's food. Am I gonna take it? You're gonna take, I better get it before he takes it. You know, when you have that grouping, even though they're cold and it's, you know, it's a very, you know, they have that slow metabolism and they may not be as actively feeding as when, you know, it was 60 some degrees instead of 40 some degrees. Um, but this slow trolling with a series of ripping the jerk bait up and then letting your arm kind of letting the rod tip swing back, which, which lets the bait suspend in, in one place, gives them a, a shot at it. 
and then rip it forward. Uh, it's a good way to strain a lot of water and hopefully locate these fish, you know, and, and really capitalize on, uh, on their competitive nature. We finally got one of these deeper fish to hit the jerk bait. There's just a pile of them down there, I can tell from looking at the depth finder, but they're not all that active. Um, third fish of the day, and it is almost two o'clock on the, uh, what's that one? The uh, Lucky Craft Stacy 90 SP. So, you know, it, it may be something that picks up here towards the end of the day. Uh, I'm hoping, but that slow, just slow troll, just keep it moving, keep it, man, it is in you, dude, keep it going with a series of rips and pauses and really utilize the electronics to locate these fish. So I've marked where all these fish are. There's no structure. And this is me coming back to it, but you know, it's it's off of that point. And you know, it, it, being able to say, yeah, there 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 are a bunch of fish that like to hang out over there, and it's connected to the winter hole is is important. Marking waypoints of fish, even if they're not doing anything, is important. I'm back in. The same spot I got the first one, and that's a better fish. Shallow as I kind of suspected we might get. Uh, yeah, that one stayed down quite a while. Come here, big fish. Come here. All right, so my instinct to leave those deep fish alone because there's going to be some other ones coming shallow was uh, was a good one and that hook held that hook did good I was in that that same feeding station down in the wood that's a heavier fish. Nice. That makes me happy. All right, I'm happy to catch them on a jig. Always happy to get them on a jig. Um, I'm gonna pull this guy away from where he was caught because there may be another one in there. We're gonna move out to deeper water. Sometimes this matters, sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna get a quick measurement. Um, if there's several fish in an area, with that board and you catch one and put him right back he's 18 and a half and you know that 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 fish that was caught is freaked out and thinks you know it goes right back down in there the other ones see it and say what's wrong with you you don't look so good and they don't think about eating. They think about, well, self-preservation. Right, so I came right back up to this feeding station and you can see, can you see that? So we got current coming through, leaves are passing by until you get all the way in the back. And that's where that fish was. Real calm water up in there. Uh, leaves are are not moving back there but they're scooting by here so again you have that that current gradient and then deep water I'm out in uh, I must say it's nine feet out here you know that's that's part of the combination I think really works current gradient you know something that's creating a, a current seam and then deep water and this is the pool that they're wintering in. So I'm near where I caught the second one. Uh, and 
it's you know it's a related feeding station I mean it's you know the second one was caught what right there this one was caught right over here so oh, that jig just came right out just popped out so you know having a landing net really makes a difference Man, are they healthy They're cold though Hold on, dude. I'm gonna take you for a ride. Short one. I'm not gonna have you tell your friends though. Yeah, I think it's a bigger deal in winter because the fish are usually grouped together pretty tightly. I think when it's it's warmer out, they spread out, and you know you have less of a chance of infecting a bunch of fish with being freaked out. I think you're far enough away. Don't tell your friends. Let's go. So, I've not had wind all day and now it's starting to push along and I've cast it back into that spot and it's putting a big arc in my line. So, I got faith in this spot Closer for a short cast, and I'm feeding that anchor down. I don't know that I'm going to double anchor. We were on the Susquehanna River recently, and I showed some double anchoring going on there. When it's really windy, double anchoring is certainly something that can help you feel the bite. But what we're trying to do is eliminate any curve in the line, that curvature from the wind pushing on it, that bow in the line, can really hurt your chances of uh, detecting the bite. That was a quick hit. I'm going to use the motor to see if I can get him out of there. Yeah, that was right up in the... Oh, that's a good fish. I got it. I'm towing him. I'm actually using the motor to get him away from all that wood. He was right up at the top of that current scene. Okay, he's away enough. Oh, he wants to jump too. Oh, yeah, I skipped it into the tightest spot that I could have. And all the way up at the top of that, that feeding station. All right, get you in there. Oh, yeah. That was a good jump. That was a nice jump, fishy. Very good jump, right in the corner of the mouth. Wasn't a whole lot holding them on there. Clearly I favor the jig. I do think, you know, the sun's getting lower and I think as, as the sun gets lower, yeah, he's a 19, yep. As the sun gets lower, you know, this is the area where they winter. He was all the way up at that, that feeding station, right next to it, really part of it. Um, but I think that, ah, oh, you're beautiful. I think that the jerk bait could really produce out in the middle of this. I think they may come up and, and look to feed. All right, I'm running back up top to give one more shot at the uh, the top feeding position and uh, hit a spot that I had not hit yet. And it is the right time of day for them to be eating. This one's towing me. This one is pulling me along. Ah, fishy. I'll get you back in here in just a second. Another good one. 
gotta fish all the way till it's dark because you know they'll eat they'll eat quite a bit at dusk hmm. oh oh yeah that's a good way to end number nine in the net. All right. Good day on the water. But man, do I need to make tracks. Yeah, 17 and a quarter. Time to go home. I will do a, an illustration to really drive home the concepts of really figuring out, well, figuring out where in the winter holes your, your feeding stations are. That is, you know, something that you can look at, you can read current, you can, you know, you can look at structure, you can look at drop-offs. Uh, upstream from the deepest area and you know take some good educated guesses get out there while it's not full-on winter and um, you know figure out your your feeding stations once you figure them out there's always going to be some you know there's always going to be fish moving through that area uh, at some point during the day and if you know those areas you can go right to them and capitalize. Alright, I am wrapping up doing the edit on this particular video and I wanted to go over this this illustration here uh, that, that really shows uh, where those feeding stations were in relation to the, the deeper, slower water uh, in this system. The blue, the blue line here really marks the current that's rolling through the area in Obviously, this I've marked as the, the deepest water uh, is between 10 and 15 deep, feet deep. This is the area where I saw a whole lot of, of bass on the, the side imaging. Uh, I got the one on the, uh, the suspending jerk bait, just slow ripping, you know, slow trolling through there with a series of rips. Um, but this is where they're going to be all winter. This is, you know, a, an area of slower current uh, where you know, they don't have to use a whole lot of energy to hang out in this area. Uh, there's some wider areas up here, but they really didn't um, have much in the way of fish uh, that I found, but it was also, you know, three and four foot deep water, not 15 feet deep water. The The red marks that I show here really show the uh, the spots that I consider the the feeding stations for these largemouth bass in uh, in late fall and early winter. Um, they're adjacent to the deep water. Uh, from the deepest water even up to here was probably something less than a quarter mile. Um, the most productive one was right next to it. It was actually considered, you know, I consider it as part of the, the deepest water, uh, you know, the winter hole itself. The current rolling past each of these little corners and points where you have that access, quick access to deeper water, uh, this one produced late in the day. I didn't find that till right at the end. Uh, same thing with this one. These two produced midday, and this one produced throughout the day repetitively. So really um, being right next to the deepest water, but having that, you know, that current rolling off of a point, and they're tucked in there with that wood and, you know, the, uh, the just the really calm water next to good current rolling through and, and showing them a conveyor belt full of food, I, I would think. Uh, they're, they're always ready to eat. If they're in that position, they're looking to eat. Uh, same thing with these other feeding stations. And this was working, you know, in water temperature. They were in the upper 40s and, and got up into the low 50s. Uh, and this is the, the end of November. So having located these spots, when I go back there in, in January and February, where the water temperature is in the 30s, I know those spots where if they're going to eat that day, if you've had a warming trend 
and these fish are going to pull out because they still do eat in winter. These, I've already figured out, these are the spots where I can go and expect to find fish that are actively looking for something to eat. Same thing will happen in, uh, in March, starting mid-March, you know. These will also be productive areas as they look to, uh, to leave this deeper water and move upstream or, or downstream, uh, preparing for the spawn. I will say if you move too far upstream or downstream, th there's really very few bass at all that you can find. They all aggregate in these areas. And the way that you find areas like this is, you know, by, by exploring, by covering lots of miles. And uh, I certainly do that with the Torquedo um, Ultralight on the back of, of my inflatable kayak. You know, I see a lot of miles of a lot of rivers. And, uh, you know, the more that you do, the more exploration that you do, the more likely you are to come across little, little gems like that. Um, the concept works the same thing for both largemouth and smallmouth. It's the same process of finding these feeding stations. Hope this helps you uh, catch some bass this winter and, and maybe even into early next spring.